Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching this. Dirt Road Believers, so glad to be with you. I am Tina. It's Thursday, so we're getting really close to the weekend. And spring is trying its best to spring. <laughs> I've looked around and I see evidence of all kinds of little blooms and stuff happening, so I'm getting so excited. It's, I don't know, like 56, 57 degrees out. It's um, the morning before I'm going to church this morning, so it feels so good to be out here. Um, just in the beautiful weather, it's gonna be a gorgeous, gorgeous day again. Thanks again for being with me. And today we are continuing um, our series in March called March on Mental Health. And I thought we had a really good devotion on Tuesday about breaking mental strongholds. So if you missed that, I hope you'll go back and see it. Today we're gonna be getting into, why do we always go back to the same pattern? Why do we run back to things that we know are gonna be hurtful, they're gonna cause us pain, but yet we do it anyway. It's, it's like uh, Paul famously penned in Romans, why do I do the things I don't wanna do and I don't do the things I do wanna do? I don't know, we're gonna to try to answer that question today with some scripture and shed God's truth on why we keep returning to the same um, bad relationships, the same places, the same negative thought patterns. Why do we do it? Uh, we're gonna get a little hope in that area today in God's word, so join me for that. Stick around, and now we're gonna get into our video. Uh, it hasn't happened yet, it's about to. Uh, my son Crawford loves to go rock climbing. We haven't been in a while. And so we're gonna head up to Chattanooga today and let him do some rock climbing and see, see what we can get into. So that's our video for today. Enjoy this short video, and then I will be back for today's devotion. How dare you film me? Mm. This isn't allowed. There's a thug. Come on, why would you say that? He's thugging. Why would you say that? So you wouldn't video me. Well, I'll just cut that out. Where am I? <laughs> and there we are. We're going climbing at high point. This is not moving. Nobody even <laughs> mashed the floor. <laughs> We're stuck in the elevator. No one froze. Help! Sucks. Lady, what's the play? Way in the ad. Way in the ad. We can go clothes shopping after this. I gotta get shoes anyway. So might as well. Hey. You do need shoes, but I can't spend all day here. Why? You got plans? I have stuff I have to get done for tomorrow. You know, adults have to go to work tomorrow. I gotta go to school tomorrow. <laughs> they feel okay? Yeah. Okay. Go get your stuff. Who's gonna give you your... your You don't leave your shoes with him?
world? How in the world do you think you're going to do that? What do you think you can do that? Do this one again, Carl. This one hurts. It's physically painful. Push through. In my front yard and this is my favorite view from my front yard the mountain back behind me so I hope you enjoy it as we have our devotion today um, remember as a part being a part of growing this channel I would love for you to like each video uh, make sure that you are sharing them with people that you know will get something out of them and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed all those things in the YouTube world make a big difference in spreading the ministry of Dirt Road Believer so I thank you for that um, also don't forget there is a $500 giveaway to two teachers coming up in Teacher Appreciation Month the month of May so for details you can go to Dirt Road Believer Facebook page and you'll find a video there um, and the caption is because educators do more than educate <laughs> All right, guys, let's get into our devotion. We're going to be in 1 Samuel today, and we're also going to be in Psalms. So if you will get your Bible. The other day, we were talking about David, and we're going to go back to David today because David was one of these people that when he um, wasn't thinking straight, when something was happening, that he was unsettled, his first inclination was like, just run. Just run. And he didn't always run back to the most sensible of places. You'll remember that when he was um, young, his first victory was defeating the uh, big giant Goliath. Big giant. That's, I guess that's redundant. <laughs> but he, he defeated him. And when he defeated him, he actually got Goliath's sword. And so now he has, he's being threatened by King Saul. King Saul is after his life. And where does he return back to? He returns back to Goliath's home, Gath. And what does he have with him? Goliath's sword. That makes no sense at all that he would go there. But let's read a little bit about it. This is 1 Samuel 21. I'm starting in verse 10. It says, David fled that day from Saul's presence and went to King Achish of Gath. But his, the king's servant said to him, Isn't this David? Um, the king of the land don't they sing about him during their dances Saul has killed thousands but David has killed 
his ten th tens of thousands? David took this to heart and became very afraid of the king of Gath. So he pretended to be insane in his presence. <laughs> he acted like a madman around them, scribbling on doors of the city gate and letting saliva run down his beard. Look! You see, this man is crazy, Akish said to his servants. Why did you bring him to me? Do I have a shortage of crazy people that you would bring this one to act crazy around me? Is this one going to come into my house? So um, David actually, because he acts crazy and insane and um, the king does let him go, but you see he gets there and in his mind, somehow this made perfect sense that he would flee to Gath, the people who hate him because they killed Goliath with Goliath's sword. But he gets there and kind of comes to himself like, what am I doing? And guys, I see this all the time in the lives of Christians. We run back to something that makes no sense. Why, when we look back on the history of what happened when we were there, um, people's thoughts towards us, the pain that we experience, the, I mean, it makes no sense. And I see this a lot of times in uh, relationships. We go back to a relationship where we know destruction is sure to happen. And then once we're back in it, we're like, what am I doing? What am I doing? And I kind of alluded to this scripture earlier in Romans 7. It's uh, starting in verse 15, it said, Paul says, For I do not understand what I'm doing, because I do not practice what I want to, but I do what I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, I agree with the law that is good. So now I'm no longer going, so now I'm no longer the one doing it, but sin living in me. For I know that nothing good lives in me that is my flesh, for the desire to do what is good is with me but there is no ability to do it for i do not do the good i want to do but i practice the evil i do not want to do now if i do what i want to do and i'm no longer the one that does it but it is sin that lives in me all right let's break that down and bite by bite digest that sin living in us flesh wants what it wants and oftentimes flesh will run back to a place that it knows even though it's not a healthy place to be and that that shows that it was done in haste if you're running back to behaviors if you're running back to relationships if you're running back to thought patterns that were destructive to you um that's not god's guidance and so Getting getting godly guidance and praying about that before we make hasty uh, decisions out of the flesh um, is something that we definitely have to be intentional and mindful about. And now I want to read to you. This is in Psalms 56. This is the psalm that David wrote when he was in Gath going what am I doing? Why am I here? I guess I'll just act like a crazy person and start drooling and scribbling on the doors. <laughs> um, and I love Psalms, guys. I told you this the other day. I love Psalms because when you are going through something so difficult, whether it's situational, whether it's mental, emotional, spiritual, turn to the Psalms. I remember when I was going through infertility and it was just such a hard, hard time for me. Turn to the Psalms. And I love that we get um, David's prayers and David's praises, praises in the midst of these very situations that we're reading about in 1 Samuel. So let's see what he has to say um, in Psalm 56. It says, Be gracious to me, God, for man is trampling me. He fights and oppresses me all day long. My adversaries trample me all day long, for so many arrogantly fight against me. When I'm afraid, I'll trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I will trust. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? They twist my words all day long. All their thoughts are against me. They stir up strife, they lurk, they watch my steps while they wait to take my life. Will they escape in spite of such sin? God, bring down the nations in wrath. You yourself have recorded my wonderings. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Then my enemies will retreat on the day when I call. 
This I know, God is for me. In God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise, in God I trust, I will not be afraid. What can mere humans do to me? I'm obligated by vows to you, God. I will make my thank offerings to you. For you rescued me from death, even my feet from stumbling, to walk before God in the light of life. Our feet are going to stumble, okay? They're going to stumble back to the old ways. They're going to stumble back to the old patterns and relationships that we hated the first time and don't understand why we go back to them a second time. But it says, God will not let my feet stumble. God, in you, I will trust. God, in your word, I will praise and I will seek you. I love the... Um, I love the verse, let me go back to it, that says, you've recorded my wonderings. Where have we wondered to that God has not been, even in our mistakes? And when we get to those places of our own doing, it says, you put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? This I know, God is for me. So continue to praise the word of the Lord. Continue to seek his guidance. And just because we have wondered, our feet have wandered in the wrong direction and have caused us tears and anguish, then continue to praise him. Because we don't, we're not a people who shrink back and give up and just stay down once we fall down or our feet stumble. We get back up and we have to do that mentally every day. We have to wake up with the hope and the assurance that God is for me. And if God is for me, what does it matter what mere humans say about us? So guys, I'm going to be praying this week. I've already told you I'm praying about your mental strongholds, that you can break free of the mental anguish that strongholds cause. And I'm also praying that if your feet have wandered back, somewhere that it shouldn't and it's caused you tears and it's caused you pain and hurt that God will show you the next steps to take. He doesn't always show us, you know, 10 years into the future, but he'll give us that next step. So you got to lean into him and trust him. And most importantly, do not fear because God is for you. I hope this word has reached you today in the perfect timing that God planned for you. And I hope that if someone came to mind when you were listening to this devotion today and someone is going to be empowered and enabled by Psalm, 60, Psalm 56 that we read today, I hope that you will share it with them. I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend coming up. Um, may you be blessed abundantly. And until next week, where we'll continue March on Mental Health, slow down. Take the dirt road, believer.